Namo myoho renge kyo. Namo myoho renge kyo. Namo myoho renge kyo. Hi, friends. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your practice. Thanks for your support. Take a second to like and subscribe. It's a bodhisattva thing to grow our sangha, yeah? Myoho renge kyo. We're going to talk about Myoho Renge Kyo. We're going to talk about Namu. We're going to talk about Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. But in this video, we're just going to talk about Myoho Renge Kyo, those five characters. Well, I lied. We'll talk about it a little more. But this is the book entry for the Buddhism reference Myoho Renge Kyo. I've got four bullet points here The Engine of Life. Myoho Renge Kyo is a phonetic sound representing ancient characters, calligraphy, designed to contain the concepts of self-realization that Buddha Shakyamuni shared with us as a method of invoking our Buddha-ness. So they're not magic words. They're not... They're not words. They're sounds that we sing, right? Chant, sing, in order. Remember, too, in the sutras, the voice is Buddha because with the voice, we, en we engage all of our samsaric senses. Well, especially with the use of this mandala. So we engage our eyesight focused on myoho, right? Those characters to instantiate renge and the three bodies of Buddha all at once. We invoke our Buddha-ness. We open the eye of Gohonzon to experience Buddha-ness. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. But that is the witnessing of the engine of life, the process that all phenomena arise from, instantiate, whole, right? And disappear, dis dissolve. Engine of life. Two, the title of the teachings of Shakyamuni, making sure... Shakyamuni doesn't want us to miss the point. He titles the teaching, those characters, Myoho Renge Kyo, as though the Lotus Sutra was the culmination of his teachings and that all of his teachings have led to this pinnacle of the most simple process of invoking our enlightenment, Myoho Renge Kyo. Third, the priori law. It is from the moment the universe began, time began, space began, to this very moment, this same process has never changed. It's ongoing. We are experiencing it moment to moment to moment. And everything else is blah, blah, blah about this. Fourth, the ultimate truth experienced, key word, in the sentient mind. Gohonzon. The sentient mind is where we, you and I, can experience, get to know Buddha wisdom, experience this truth. This truth is ongoing, has been and will be, but our experience of it is unique to our samsaric apparatus of emerging a sentient mind, a witness, an observer, which is also arising, abiding, and dissolving. When we die, it's extinct. It's gone. The process on, is ongoing. It doesn't have consciousness. It doesn't care about what it's doing. The only the only um, imperative that you could assign to, and this is our imperative we're assigning to it, right? Don't make a mistake. It isn't. We are. 
Oh, frames missed. I apologize. Anyway, the imperative we could assign to the process is that the only thing that drives the process is a is a desire to instantiate, a desire for being. But notice I wor I'm using the word desire because that's our frame of reference, not the processes. The process is just a process. And I, see, these this is the fallacy of language that confounds us, but you must understand. All right, what I wrote in the book. See if I can keep my hands from waving around so we don't miss any more frames. Each of these five characters, Myo, Ho, Reng, Ge, and Kyo, act as containers of essential concepts central to the method of practice for self-realization of our inherent enlightened mind, right? It's just another way of saying what I said a little earlier. Together, the characters form the actual practice of that realization as a performative invocation to bring into existence the condition of mental focus in order to become cognizant, aware, and experience in the sentient mind this essential truth of all phenomena. That's a lot of words saying go hanzan. Awaken. Hmm? This invocation is likened to the opening of a door or eye in the mind, right? The Buddha eye. The Gohonzon eye. Not eye as in the singular letter. I as in the seeing consciousness. In order to see, quote unquote, what has already, uh, what has always been present but obscured from our everyday samsaric preoccupied mind of earthly distractions and cravings. Our samsaric mind constantly doing that thing I was saying earlier, desiring to be, is looking for all signs of existence. It's a data machine. And it's constantly identifying and discriminating and this, not that, that, not this, those, not those. That's our samsaric mind. In this futile effort of identification, not so that our samsaric mind can collect all this data and say, I have more data than anything, anyone else. But this futile effort is a, is a way of knowing a self or defining a self. Because if I know everything by name, if I apply a label to everything and I am not that thing, then I then am something else. But it's not even to be that something else that's important to the process. Right? The process starts with what? potential no parameters there and so the process instantiates formations shakyamuni talked about this in from the four noble truths those formations have built in to them an instantiation the moment that instantiation comes to be realized identification Right? Look at what small children do. I don't mean babies. I mean preschool children. Every scribble they make on a page, every dent they put in a wall, they want to identify it as their, of their making. Right? As soon as children learn their name, right? Talk about identification. You are Tommy. You are Tommy. Tommy, come eat. Tommy, go to bed. Tommy, come here. Tommy learns pretty quickly that Tommy is a significant word. 
and it's his identity. So now, from now on, everything Tommy touches, he wants to put Tommy on. This is Tommy's. This is mine. This is of me. I made this. You see my name? Tommy. Everything is identification. Where'd that come from? Well, we taught him Tommy. Well, you can say Tommy all day long unless there's a mind to associate that with the self. What does it matter? That is the energy of clinging, of attachments, right? Now, you could fool yourself and say, yeah, but then you grow up and uh, you're still doing it. We all do it. It may not be foremost in our, but how many times have you done thing at your job and then somebody else took credit for what I did? Oh, somebody else signed their name to it. Yeah, it's a constant. How do we see past that? Mm. Is it possible to see past that? So, a very rudimentary example, but there you have exactly what Myoho Rengekyo is subduing because that activity is so omnipresent that we forget. We forget the nature of our moment-to-moment -moment experience of life because we're so muddled in all of our identification, clinging, attraction. Hmm? So let's go on. To see what has already been has always been present, but obscured by our everyday samsaric preoccupied mind of earthly distractions and cravings. That's what I was just talking about. This opening of the mind's eye to witness the true nature of life in all its expressions is the ultimate objective of the Buddhist practice. Nichiren has labeled this opening eye as the honzon of the practice. Since it is the ultimate objective, honzon, Nichiren prefaces it with the additional label of Go, an honorific preface to indicate its singular importance as the Go Honzan, right? So, from Nichiren's own mouth, and we'll assume a certain accuracy to the translation, we really have no choice, but from one of Nichiren's Goshos, one of the various descriptions of the five characters of the Daimoku is quoted here as follows. And if you've done any research on Nichiren's writings, the voluminous number of letters he wrote, you'll find several letters, many letters, on a certain character, Myo. Or maybe he talks about Ho. But it's hard to find Gosho that cover all the characters. So here's one. I've done the research for you. This one's from, quote, on the meaning of the five characters, Myo, Ho, Renge, and Kyo, from Letter to Jijobo. Now, i am bring up a point here. If you're using the search on this uh, video channel, and there's hundreds and hundreds of videos, well over a thousand. Excuse me. And you put in the key word, uh, key phrase in that search, Myo, Ho, Renge, Kyo you're going to get a result set of videos on Myoho Rengekyo. And I may cover this Go Show in one or two or three of those videos. But if you're just searching through the videos on this channel, hoping to find this information, and you come across a Go Show that says, uh, letter to G, uh, Jijo Bo, how in the heck would you know that this is a document explaining each character of the Daimoku? of the title of the Lotus Sutra. So, 
this is why I, I, you know, searches are fun. Even if you use Google, you may have to break down Mio separate from Ho, separate from it, because it's each character we're looking for, right? Anyway, this is why I think a book like this is essential because it, it quickly reduces your search time. And now that you have this clue, Jijo Bo, you can go to the Nichiren Goshu playlist or Nichiren 2 and look up Jijo Bo and you can read the entire Go Show yourself, right? Okay, so this is a quotation from this Go Show. Nichiren. The great teacher of Mount Hiei, Dengyo, journeyed to China and received instruction on the point of this passage. And the passage he's talking about is single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha. Okay? It says so later, but because this is a video, I want you to hear it. The passage, single of that passage, of single-mindedly, means the one pure way. Single-mindedly means the one pure way. Okay? And mind, quote-unquote, means all phenomena. So in the phrase single-mindedly, single means the pure way, and mind means all phenomena. So the pure way of all phenomena. Single-mindedly means we are using our consciousness to see the one pure way of all phenomena. Makes sense. That is why the great teacher Tendai, explaining the Chinese character for mind, quote unquote, said that its four brush strokes represent the moon and the three stars. You see, when you start to take apart these characters and the calligraphy, do you see how these are not words? These are immense concepts. And these pictograms that are the calligraphy conceptually represent samsaric thoughts, but those concepts are vast. All right, moving on. And that this implies that the mind of the effect of Buddhahood is pure and clean. When you look at the stars, there's a clarity of presence and manifestation that transcends the mere me, 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 me of samsara, yeah? Now, Nitrin says, I, Nitrin, say that single, he's going to offer a slightly different interpretation, stands for myo, the pure way, potential, well, I say potential, hmm? or wonderful and difficult to understand. Yeah, certainly when you look at the sky and you see the moon and the stars, it's wonderful, but it's difficult to understand. And yet there it is, right? Myo. And mind, Nitrin says, equates with ho. or law. In other words, the a priori function of life. These things exist. Moon, stars, mind, perception, experience, right? Desiring Right? Remember the statement, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha. Desiring, Nichiren says, equates with Ren. Hmm? Ren being lotus. And see, S-E-E, -E, for gay or flower. So Ren, gay, lotus, flower. But you understand that that's a... a is that a simile or metaphor? Metaphor, I guess. Of the the act of myoho, 
from potential to instantiation, renge, are like the lotus flower, spawns itself at the very moment it blossoms. This is the moment to moment of life. Hmm? And Buddha for kyo. Buddha, as you now understand, not a man, not a degree from a Buddha university, Buddha being an experiential state of experiencing the, the mind's perceptions, the, the reality of life. Kyo, the Dharma, the teaching of the experience, but not the teaching itself, the actual experience. This is Myo Ho Renge Kyo. The wonderful and difficult to understand law of like the lotus flower, Buddha, or Sutra, Sutra being our way of communicating this experience, right? You say the teaching. But it's easy to get misled in thinking that the teaching are enlightenment. It's not the teaching that's enlightenment. It's the teaching is about enlightenment, the experience of. In propagating these five characters, practitioners should not hesitate even if it costs them their lives, quote unquote. Right? We hear this throughout the sutras. You should have the kind of resolve and dedicate the knowing, the conviction that you can enlighten your Buddha, that you can be in Buddha. And for that ability, it's not that you don't value your samsaric life, but that the very nature of having a samsaric life owes to your realization of Buddha. And in a very real way, because as you've heard many times, to attain this enlightenment, this Buddha-ness, is to cease the clinging, the cravings. You are letting go of this samsaric life. It's not about dying. It's about no longer being attached to, clinging to. You don't have to die to do that. You can do that with your mind, your Buddha mind. Hmm? Nichiren continues, quote, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha may be read as follows. Single-mindedly observing the Buddha concentrating one's mind on seeing the Buddha. And when looking at one's own mind, perceiving that it is the Buddha. Having attained the fruit of Buddhahood, the eternally inherent three bodies, I may surpass even Tendai and Dengyo and excel even Nagarjuna and Mahakashyapa. Now, what did Nichiren just say? Just another, several different ways of saying what I was expressing earlier. That when we focus our minds on our Buddha, Whatever knowledge and teachings we've gained from Nagarjuna, Mahakashyapa, Dengyo, Tendai, Nichiren, that's all well and good. But we're not doing all of this so we can win a game of Jeopardy. We're doing this so that we can experience this ultimate truth. And once you do that, the fruit of Buddhahood, our experience of Buddha, then all of that teaching just kind of fades, goes aside. Not lost, but it's no longer 
what motivates us. It's no because we're in it now. Right? How many books on skiing can you read? But the one time you go down a, a snowy mountain on those little wooden sticks you put under your feet, or maybe skiing for you is on a lake behind a boat, all that book learning might be of some reference and you, but pff, do you need it anymore? Hell no. First time you face plant in the snow or the water, you're going to learn a hell of a lot, aren't you? Because you're in it. The Buddha wrote, or Shakyamuni wrote, actually he didn't write anything, right? It was all verbal, but anyway. The Buddha wrote that one should become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. Now that may seem counterintuitive when you first read it. But what Nichiren is identifying in Shakyamuni's words, and who knows how many translations have muddied this, but it's knowing what we know. What Shakyamuni is doing here is identifying two aspects of mind, the samsaric and the enlightened. So if you let your samsaric mind run your life, go all the way back to the Four Noble Truths, then you're letting your attachment and your clinging to identification rule your life. Guess what? Suffering. That way of experiencing the world is what creates the opportunity for anxiety, stress, sufferings. Yeah? And what did Shakyamuni say? If you want to stop suffering, it not just so you can feel better, but so that you can live this life unobstructed by sufferings, stress, anxiety. Stop clinging to things. Stop identifying with things. Know your more profound, more real, more process. Live this life as it occurs rather than dragging along identification, which is really pulling you back from this experience of your life. Live it to the full contemporaneously. So when he says, Buddha wrote that one should become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself, what he's saying is, if you stay in the samsaric mind, then that identification process is running your life. That's how you're going to experience your life. But if you take hold of that mind that you have, that samsaric mind, and you instead train it to look deeply into its true nature of perception and experience and train that mind to stay focused on the process of life, then all of that identification comes with you but it doesn't engage you. It doesn't hold your attention. Rather, your attention is now using your mind, perceiving, experiencing life as it occurs. It's a very, quote, liberating experience, yeah? This is how you get rid of the baggage. So that's what he's saying. Nietzsche continues here. This is what I mean when I empath emphatically urge you to give up even your body and never begrudge even your life for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. In other words, whatever your life conditions are, whether you're in utter poverty in the middle of uh, Africa 
or you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You can spend your life aggrieved, blaming your circumstances, right? That's samsara. That's exactly the Four Noble Truths. Just focus on your awakening and it trumps all of that. All of it. Because your life, life is life is life. It doesn't care about clothing, money, fashion, cars. It doesn't care. Life is life. It's the ultimate. Experience that. And he closes with Namo Myoho Renge Kyo, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. Of course. Nichiren. Well, I managed to avoid skipping any more frames once I finally caught myself being overly enthusiastic, shall we say. <laughs> Myoho Renge Kyo. The title, phonetically, a Japanese phonetic of a Chinese calligraphy of Indian conceptual teachings, a song of self-realization. Right? The teaching of the Dharma, the teaching of the experience of the Dharma. Namo Myoho I hope you found that useful. Next up will be Namu, the significance of those two characters. But for now, keep your practice strong. Understand the profundity of your practice. Such an amazing opportunity. And in that endeavor, please be kind to yourself. Take care of your health and those around you, right? Use this resource. There's a video on the home page of this channel, this video channel that explains the threefoldlost.com website, all the free information there, the link to the ebooks, this book, which we're eager, we're we're in the ends now, so we're almost there's a good bit to do because we've got some really complicated um Topics to cover like the 3000 realms and the Nidana and all of that. But we're fast coming on those. So after we sift through all of that, then the print book will be finalized and available. And so will this ebook be finally completely updated. But in the meantime, it's all valid. Uh, you know, there might be a typo here and there, but it's still useful. If you're studying, if you're struggling with any of these terminologies, and go ahead and get it. And uh, you know when we're all, when I'm all said and done with the, this is the final version. You can email me at tlksylvain.com. Right? Show me your take a picture of your Lulu receipt or whatever, so I know that you've already purchased it, and I'll send you an updated PDF, free of charge. We can do that with the internet. Amazing. Couldn't have done this. Uh, couple of decades ago so all right thank you so much for your participation for your support patrons on patreon and uh, paypal <laughs> that you're the reason i can do this so we're all thankful for that i hope <laughs> that almost sounded a little vain it wasn't meant that way i'll just say i am very grateful for your support Take care of yourselves, take care of your health, as I've already said, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye for now.